This is going to be a quick analog lab project from this series of hands-on learning project manuals. What you see here is the second edition of part one and part two that will be available on the website December 2019, January 2020. Also, a new manual on PanelView 800 and PowerFlex 525 will have a series of lab projects that are integrated with Part 1 and Part 2. Part 1 and Part 2, you do some labs and then it'll say go to the PanelView 800 manual and do this lab. And when you're done with that, then it'll say go back to the Part 1 or Part 2 and continue. Half of that red and black manual is PanelView 800, probably more than half, and the other half is PowerFlex 525. Now the PowerFlex 525 lab projects are divided into two groups using Ethernet or doing hardwired start-stop circuits with remote and local speed control. This particular lab today is going to be in the fourth volume which is part three of CCW with the Micro 800. So this is going to be an inexpensive analog sensor learning experience using this guy. These cost about two or three dollars at the most on eBay or Amazon. There's the part number right there. Three wires, you guessed it. Black and red is power and yellow is the analog output. In order to accomplish this project, you're going to need five volts DC, 4.5 to 5.5 applied to the black and the red wire on that sensor. If you don't have a five volt power supply, then you can use either one of these two buck converter DC to DC circuits. Uh, the little guy without the display you can get six of those for about eight dollars I mean so they're a buck fifty a piece if you buy them in batches and then the one right next to it's a couple bucks more the advantage of it is it has a little three-digit display on there so when you're adjusting the potentiometer you can see exactly how many volts you have but it's unnecessary you can use the cheap one to the left you need five volts DC you need this sensor and you need any analog input embedded or add-on module that will support a zero to ten volt DC signal I'm going to use an IF4 because that's what I have on my Micro 820. This sensor, and you can see how simple the wiring is there, uh, 5 volts DC to the red wire and then the black or common is shared between the DC supply and the common. And notice that that IF4 has voltage and current terminals, so you got to be careful what you're doing. We're going to do voltage. That input, we're configuring it for a 0 to 10 volt DC. However, that 0 to 10 volt DC will go through an A to D converter that will give you an integer value, unsigned integer of 0 to 65,535. Now the sensor itself, because it has a 5 volt power supply, cannot put out even 5 volts. So if you look at the chart there, electro-optical characteristics, you will see that the maximum output voltage differential between 10 centimeters, which is about 4 inches, and 80 centimeters, which is about 31 and a half inches, is 2.15 volts. And if you look over to your right, you'll see that that translates to a fairly small range within the capabilities of that analog sensor. Initially, I used an amplifier. And I was going to amplify that 2.15 output voltage differential into something larger. Then I decided, you know what, this is more interesting because this is not a practical application. So what this lab is going to do is give you an opportunity to see real simply how you can take an analog input that doesn't start at zero and doesn't go up to maximum and and in this case, the way I determined that 3,517,000 ,000 was I set up that sensor and I aimed it at the wall 31 and a half inches away at a piece of plain white paper. Uh, what I got was 3,500. The distance measurement is inversely proportional to the output, which means the closer the object gets to the sensor, the higher the value. Then I placed that same piece of white paper at four inches, 10 centimeters, in front of that sensor and I got 17,000. So basically we're working with a value of 3,500 to 17,000. And we're going to scale that into something in inches or centimeters in our controller. And if you look at some of the other values in that uh, characteristics table, you will see what's called typical. So the there's minimum typical and maximum. Typical is 1.9 volts deviation between 10 and 80 centimeters. You'll get at least 1.65. You may get as much as 2.15. The difference is right below there is no one using reflect object, white paper, and it gives you gray cards, white face, reflectance 90%. And if you look above the chart there in the upper right hand corner, it says um, that the, the average temperature is 25 degrees centigrade. 
and this is done at 5 volts DC. All of these things will affect your output. Now this is not a practical application. This is an exercise at taking what you see right in front of you and coming up with something in your controller that reflects what you see in this opti electro-optical characteristics chart. To keep this video as short as possible, it's not going to be a step-by-step. -step. If you haven't already learned the basics and how to go to Toolbox and pick an instruction block, drop it down and configure it, you're going to have to go back and do the basics first. But I am going to explain what I have in front of you here. This instruction is an any to real. It will convert any data type to a real data type. And the reason we have to do that is because the SCL scale instruction does not accept anything Thing but floating point. And our analog input is an unsigned integer. So the very first instruction, we convert that analog input. Now notice P1, that means plug-in module. If it was an embedded analog input, it would say EM. So I'm taking my analog input that I have that sensor hooked up to, and I convert it to a real data type that I named analog input zero. Now I have two scale instructions here. Remember that the output from that sensor, we're measuring distance, but distance is inversely proportional to the output, which means the further away the object is, the lower the value of the output. So notice in my very first scale instruction, and remember uh, we have an unsigned integer, 0 to 65,535. I convert it to an, a real, which that means the raw in max is 65,535.0. And when you enter these constants, you need to put dot zero so it knows that it's a real. So my raw in max is 65,535 and my raw in minimum is zero. My engineering units, because I want to convert this to a zero to 10 for right now, like volts, zero to 10 volt input, I have inverted or flipped the max and the min because I want an output that is directly proportional. In other words, right here, I want to see a value that's directly proportional to the measurement, not inversely proportional. But I've done it both ways for you here. So both of these have a raw max of 65,535, a min of zero. But you see the engineering unit max here is zero and the minimum is 10. Here, the max is 10 and the minimum is zero. So I'm going to start out and download this program and we'll see what we get. Okay, here we are, downloaded, online, and running. Now, notice that the, and I'm looking at the 31 and a half inch distance now at a white piece of paper. And I don't have the low value that I showed in the chart. If you, if we go back and look, you see I have 3,517,000. Now, this is a different day. The temperature's a little lower in the room, and the temperature does affect the reading because this is an infrared sensor. Another thing I want you to notice before we go back is look at the at length or distance, 80 centimeters, minimum quarter of a volt, maximum at about a half of a volt. Now let's go look at what we actually got. Notice that in this scale instruction here where we've inverted it, remember we're at the lowest value. Notice that it's 0.49. That's awful close to what I just showed you. Neither one of these are really valid for anything other than we're demonstrating what you might do if you were researching a sensor and you were doing something like this. You can use these scale instructions and you can scale it to anything and you can determine if you are actually in line with that sensor. And I just showed you the out is about a half of a volt. Now the distance right now is 31 and a half inches. Now I'm going to put a piece of white paper in front of the sensor at four inches. Notice the change in value it went up to almost 18,000. So the temperature of the room, the, the amount of infrared in the room, affected the sensor that much between one day and the next. And you can see that our difference is three volts versus a half a volt. And if we go back and look at that chart again to see if we're even close, it shows a maximum deviation of 2.15 volts. But remember, we also have a minimum value of 3,500 for our, our scale. So you can see it's pretty close. Now let's, let's roll down here to another scale instruction. And here's where I actually have my raw in at 3,500, my, my raw in min at 3,500, and my max at 17,000. Because we're off in our analog input, we're getting a distance of 32 point, well, 32 inches instead of 31 and a half. So I'm gonna go back offline and change that these values over here to the values that I'm actually getting today to see how it affects this value. Be right back raw in min and max to match 
what we're getting today. 3200 for the min and more like 18,000 for the max. And notice what it shows for the output right now. And we, are, my sensor is aimed at a white piece of paper on the wall 31 and a half inches away. Now I'm going to pull that piece of white paper in at four inches and see how close it is. Now it's still off. It's bouncing around, but it's around four inches. Amazing, huh? That's the entire purpose of this lab. This lab will be included in the fourth volume, which is part three of Connected Components Workbench with a Micro 800. But for right now, watch this lab a couple times, and then you can go play to your heart's content with any kind of sensor you can find that you can rig up a path to get it into your analog input. You, so put a meter on it first and make sure it's between 0 and 10 volts. Now that we updated our values down below here, 3,218,000, let's go back up here and look at the voltage. So we got a half a volt out at the distance of 31 and a half inches. So I'll put the piece of white paper again in front at 4 inches. You see it drops down to 2 and a half. Subtract a half. What do you got? 2. Go back to your chart here. 2.15 is the maximum variation you're going to get between 10 centimeters and 80 centimeters. Now remember that this, this was not a practical application, but it was a practical use of these instructions. And I use these instructions to nail down exactly what I had for a sensor. Now if, if I go out to about, I'm just going to have to guess here on 12 inches. I'm going to guess I don't have anything marked out. Not very linear. You see I'm getting a value higher than 12 inches and if you look at the curve on this sensor it's not linear. It, you would have to do some linearization. You could do that in software. Truth is you're not going to use a sensor like this anytime out on the shop floor in the factory. You're going to be using a sensor that has built-in linearization and adjustments for span range and the whole 10 yards. I will include this lab project in that fourth volume which is part three of the set of for CCW 